All right. Good morning, Pyros. Today, we are going to be doing some wood burning. I am super excited. And we're going to be burning this cow that we've been working on all year. <laughs> Makes it sound like it was so long. <laughs> we started doing this in January. Uh, and I'm taking you along for this piece. If you want to catch up on these, you can go to their YouTube channel and they have the highlight reels. So we'll be doing that today. If you are new to me, my name is Jani Lizenby. I am the founder of burnsavvy.com. I'm the pyro professor at Burn Savvy Academy and I'm the artist behind Red Roof Barn. So feel free to go check those out. If you haven't already, Bear Woods and I are running a challenge and we're doing it on TikTok, Facebook, uh, YouTube, and Instagram. If you haven't jumped in, you can. You can jump in right now. We we do still have another giveaway coming up, so I'm super excited about that. With all of that said, today I'm going to be using my Colwood Detailer. This is my favorite wood burning tool, and I have a whole lot of them, guys. I kind of collected burners because one of my students asked which burner was my favorite, and I didn't have an answer. <laughs> so I went through and found out. Let's see if you can see that clearly. This is my rounded shader. This one is a fixed tip pen so this one doesn't come off it only comes off here replaceable tip is like one of these where the tip pops off like so and all of these are listed in the description if you decide that you want a cola detailer or you want a rounded shader with the horn here horns are typically not super smooth they kind of have a textured look to them and what I'm doing here is what I call, well, what's called the scumbling stroke. And it's basically like a whole bunch of circles, kind of a form of circularism, kind of like you have pointillism. Anyway, and so this is actually quite a common technique that you can use when you do in pyrography shading. Just circling that here and there. And some places are going to be smoother than others, and that's perfect. It's kind of what I'm going for with this horn here. As I have little splotches in here, I'm just gonna let those go to give it more of that kind of hammered look. I'm gonna turn my heat down a little bit at a five because I want the edges here to be a little bit lighter. There we go. Now it's starting to look like it's coming away from that a little bit. I'm gonna add a little bit up here also. Not too much because this is the direction that the light is coming from, is the top side. But I definitely want it to stand out from the hair. The fabulously messy Highland cow hair. Is anyone else a fan of the Highland cow hair? I just love it. Like, um, your hair is wild and crazy and you look amazing. So if you guys are looking to do more shading, you can go hit that up. And that's also in the description. So if you guys want to have a look at that, it's the Savvy Pyrography Shading Course. Let's go ahead and do this ear here, the hair on that ear. Now this tends, the ear hair tends to get kind of long and stringy like the front hair does. So I'm gonna do some long, stringy hair. Let's get some under hair under there. That's the hair from from her face. We'll get a little shadow going on in there. And we'll do some more hair here. The beautiful thing about their hair is it's really coarse. It's really rough and so it's nice because <laughs> it doesn't have to be perfect. Now I'm just using that swinging technique to get some of this hair in here. If you guys don't know about the swinging technique, that's over on my YouTube channel. And then of course, if you guys want to really hone in on those skills, I've got the Learn and Burn course. And the Learn and Burn course goes over line art and some basics of lettering, uh, stuff like that. So feel free to go check those out. Those are also in the description. One thing about a Highland cow is that the hair takes forever. There's so much of it. Here we go. I'm going to go ahead and do some under shading right there so that that light hair pops a little more. And I'm trying to keep the 
hair here pretty light because the light is hitting that directly and so I want this spot to be a little bit lighter than say over here because my light's coming from that direction. At the same time that you gotta add some shadows so that that hair looks more defined. And again, if you guys want any of these tools, if you are um, looking to upgrade, if you already have stuff, feel free to um, go check it out in the description, uh, bearwoods.com or bearwood.com forward slash pyro gets you there. And then if you use code savvy, you can get an extra 5% discount. And you'll see I'm going kind of different directions, but what I'm, what I'm always doing is going in the direction when I'm burning details or, or texture or things like that, go in the direction that the texture will be seen. Like if you're burning a shadow and I just start burning this way, that's going to show up. Unless I'm doing a very light scumbling underneath something, then I need to be keeping my pen in the direction of the fur because otherwise that will show up. So I'll add like a light shadow and then I'll come in and add details that are always in that direction. It might be kind of hard to see from the angle you're at, but like sometimes I'm doing it flat. Sometimes I'm, I've got it up on the nib uh, or on the edge of the nib. But whenever I have something where the texture is going to show, I always burn in the direction of the texture. There you go. Little scumbled shadow down there. Okay. And then I'll come back in and add some more details for her a little bit later. But right now, I want to head over to my little cow. And then I'm going to burn the center of the eye right there oh I'm excited for this little guy it's gonna be so fun and then I am going to turn it down again to about a four and a half so I can move a little bit slower if I want to and I'm going to add some shadows right up here where that eyelid comes over the eye and adds a little shadow, but I'm not going to burn over that shine. Over here and do some of that fur around the eye. Colwood's got a really nice versatile range of heat. I love it. I can burn super lightly. I can burn super darkly. I can burn on harder wood and softer wood. It's a really fabulous tool. I love it. Okay, I'm going to get a little bit of that eyelash here. Get some of that coming down. Okay. We tend to have real spiky fur around that eye. All right, I'm gonna turn this down again, uh, back to a four and a half. I want this to be a much lighter right here, but I still want there to be texture. Oops. Burned a little bit over that spot that I wanted lighter, but I think what I'll do is I'll just darken up the eye a little bit. Okay, now we gotta get some fur coming out here. Just a little bit. This can probably be a little darker, back up to five, maybe a little higher. Start getting some of that stuff burned in there. Some of this fur right there. Put that fur going over the mama just a little bit. And then mama's fur coming down. Mm-hmm. Okay. We'll come do a little bit more around that face. 
Add a little bit of shadow here where mama is nuzzling in, which I think is so fun. Hmm. Needs a little more shadow right here, I think. Give that face a little more definition. And he might be a little bit faster to burn just because he's got the shorter fur instead of hair. <gasps> there we go. A little more definite definition around this guy's mane. Something really relaxing about it and something really exciting about it all at the same time. And I'm going to work in this grain here. So don't worry about that. Sometimes I think that we as pyrographers tend to forget that wood is a natural product. And so when we go to buy it, it's like, oh no, this one came with knots. Well, they're going to have knots. You know, it's a natural a natural happenstance with wood. And so one of the funnest things for me is actually exploring ways to incorporate those knots into the wood. And that is our time for the day. So we've got to start. He's starting to look at us. So feel free to, um, to jump in there and join. Oh, I'm seeing a comment here. You also learn so much from the other artists. Yes, yes. And you got into it as a relaxing therapeutic activity. I love it. It's so true. This can be super relaxing, super therapeutic. And the community, guys, the community is amazing. Make sure to hop in there, take part in the challenge, and then go comment on each other's posts because you really do learn from each other. It is so fantastic. I love it. So I hope you guys had a a great time burning with me. I had a great time burning. You are bad to the bone. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'll take it. Now I'm going to be singing that song all day. <laughs> oh, thanks again for joining me. I hope you guys will join me next time. If you want to be posted on uh, when the next Bear Woods Live is that we are doing pyrography, feel free to go sign up over at burnsavvy.com for my email list. I will be sharing all the details there. I will also be sharing the retreat info there. And I share the challenge info. All of my pyrography stuff is sent to my email subscribers. So feel free to go jump into that. And I hope you guys have a fabulous day. We'll see you guys later. <laughs>